Well, howdy, y'all, and welcome back to my channel. I am Spice Strikling, and today I'm interviewing Kenzie, also known as Three Gun Kenzie, who is a 2A advocate, also a competitive shooter, and overall women's shooting advocate as well. I'm super excited to show you all this interview, so let's get right into it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to do this with me. I really appreciate it. I know you're super busy. <laughs> so oh, I appreciate I'm it. Take too much of your time, but I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Yes. Mainly, what you know, I wanted to talk about today was just like a brief overview of of Kenzie. You know, um, so when I'm looking at different things, I know you do a ton of competitions. Um, what would you say got you into competitions? I think I've always been competitive in nature just because I grew up, gosh, playing volleyball and soccer and softball. And I just, I love sports and going into college, there wasn't really a lot of sports at a high level. Like there's intramurals, but you know, the, those are just kind of fun. Not everybody's really good at sports. So I had Googled like FSU um, and firearms at a point. That's where I went to college and they had a, a rifle team. They had a pistol team and they also had a skeet and trap club and stuff. And so honestly, it was like signing up for the first match the addiction set in. It wasn't something where I thought I would ever be here. I didn't know about half the sports I do now. Right. And so it was just sort of, I think natural. <laughs> awesome. Did you, um, was that your first introduction into firearms in general or had you, um, had been shooting? Yeah, I grew up with, uh, my dad and grandpa and everybody used to hunt and fish and shoot. And so like, I have always been around firearms. It was just part of our household and part of our, our growing up, which was really a blessing. Um, we grew up with shotguns, mostly duck hunted. I'd never deer hunted till I was an adult, but yeah, so firearms was not new to me, but it was something where I really didn't have a lot of time behind handguns. Um, we shot a lot of revolvers, a lot of little 22s and stuff, which was really cool, but yeah, a handgun was a whole new world. Awesome. Uh, so what kind of competitions are you um, doing like nowadays? Like what do you, what do you uh, try to steer toward? Yeah. So my primary obviously is going to be three gun. There's not enough three gun left in the country. There's not enough like monthly matches, but um, three gun is my passion. It's so much fun to plot to run and gun and master all three platforms. Um, and then the other thing that I'm really addicted to now is AK matches. Um, I got to go to clash bash for the first time. And then I did AK Masters. I'll do Winter Motherland. <clears throat> so I think AK stuff is fun because the people there have a different vibe. Um, they're dressed up in plate carriers. They're dressed up in costumes. They look like Hawaiian dudes. Like it is so comical because it's kind of like people watching. Um, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. So for me, like shooting is supposed to be fun. Um, and the people really bring me to it. And next year, I'll probably get back into the Precision Rifle series. I really enjoy doing that. I just don't have a lot of time now to compete, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I can imagine how busy uh, you always are. Um, <laughs> what would you say is like one of your favorite firearms and maybe one of your least favorite? I am so biased. Um, oh, God, one. Can I pick two favorites? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'm a shotgun lover. I always will be. So my Genesis Arms, actually, we just got it rebuilt with a new barrel, new compensator, external choke. So the Genesis Arms three gun model shotgun is the best shotgun in the whole world. Uh, air controls, mag fed. It's just so much fun to shoot and so flat shooting. So it makes shotguns enjoyable. Um, and then if you have never touched a 2011, just in any 2011, right, is amazing. My Nighthawk though, BDS-9, is like shooting butter. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. So those two are my favorite. And then like least favorite, God, recently, I'm so embarrassed by it too. Recently, I had to do a video on shotguns and <laughs> I could not get the pump action to work. Like it was just so stiff. And like, I'm used to shooting and pulling back at the same time, but you couldn't, it took me like 11 seconds to shoot like five rounds. So that was a painful experience. I never want to go back to a pump action shotgun. That's honestly the truth. <laughs> awesome. Oh gosh. I can only imagine that sounds like it was terrible. <laughs> I don't understand if it needed to be cleaned or lubed or what, but it did not like to function. And I was like, this is like a $200 gun. Like I can't, oh, <laughs> the quality was terrible. God. I don't even know what brand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. That definitely sounds awful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is there, is there any firearm that you wish you had and why would it be that one? Like that you don't have like an ideal gun. 
I mean, again, you're gonna it, it's it's biased, but truly, I ordered finally the Nighthawk Sandhawk, and it's been on my list for a really long time. Um, this one has a built-in compensator, and the reason why I delayed or didn't get it in the first place was I was planning on shooting limited optics for USPSA. Um, in that division, you can't use compensators or you're an open shooting minor. So like the longest story short was I was like, all right, let me get the gun that fits all the divisions and three gun and whatever. And now I'm finally getting the the Sandhawk and it's been ordered for a while and I just can't wait to shoot it. It's been my dream gun, like at the top of my list forever, like truly over every gun. I think that's going to be a game changer when I get it. That's awesome. Yeah. It's always nice when you can get that dream gun and, and really yeah. just enjoy it so definitely I, I look forward to that for you <laughs> thank you you'll have to shoot it sometime you you have to i will let you <laughs> <laughs> for sure so when you go to these competitions now you've been competing for some time are you nervous still before each competition or what kind of like helps with those nerves so I'm always nervous with uh matches that I've never been to and so like where I go with that is when I've shot, oh gosh, a lot of majors and it, it takes a full year for some of the three gun matches, right? They only host it once a year. Now that I've been going to say example, Zoo City's Fall Brawl and Battle for the South, I have felt more comfortable because one, it's always been at the same range or ranges. Um, I always know what to expect. I know how to prepare for it. I know kind of what stages they're going to put on the ground. And so I get less nervous knowing the range, the city, the match director, like all of that, right? So where I get really nervous and I did like, not even yeah i would still say nervous it's like kalash bash i never been i've heard about it i was so excited to shoot it and it was just kind of a new environment too for me so that's kind of why and i don't think nerves ever really go away i think it's just more of those um like expectation management the people that have a lot of nerves are probably putting too much pressure on themselves because they expect that they're going to do really well and that's kind of like when i shot my very first prs match i was so nervous just because I'd never shot the gun, never shot a match, had no idea what I was doing. And so I think that's really fun is once you get past what you like, knowing what you you know and how to do stuff, then it gets less intimidating. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, have you had any kind of like special training in firearms or is everything just kind of self-taught? Yeah, so I did my very first class, um, I want to say 2019, and it was with a couple of my buddies and I, we did a private class with Joel Turner Jr., who's on the Army Marksmanship Unit team, and so that was our first kind of, or my at least, my first class I took on three gun and mastering at the time um i shot irons and i shot a tube shotgun because i was still in that tech ops division and so that was really enlightening for me to actually learn the better way for me to load a shotgun um and so that was i would say not really formal but it was a very very good class and then after that um i kind of went some more defensive route which i think is really important for competitive shooters like we know how to holster and unholster. We know how to reload. We know how to manage the pressure. It's probably not going to be the same in a self-defense scenario. Um, but I went to where our families train, which is WAF down in Orlando, Florida, and I got my very first taste of low light and sim training. And it was very, I would say, nerve wracking. Um, I actually cried during one of the simulations because the guys know that I carry every day and they forced me to like use use my firearm. And it was something where I don't want to do that. It's not something I ever want to do in real life, but it's also, it's crazy to me, but not, but like in, in a scenario, I know it's fake, right? But in the moment when you're put to that, it, it doesn't feel that way. Um, I've been to gun site once. I'm going to gun site actually here soon. And so again, those kind of training in a different way uh, with concealed carry garments and smaller guns and all that has just been really, really valuable. So I always take classes. Um, I've take, taken classes from Travis Tomasi and Mason Lane. and I. I want to do more. And I recommend this for anyone listening on this, on this episode, you know, go get training. And especially if it's outside of your comfort zone, like don't just train on what you're good at, and what you like, go train on what you don't like. Um, I went to Thunder Ranch this year and did a shotgun course. And I can guarantee you there is not a lot of people that know how to load a shotgun one handed on the ground sideways. We shot out of a truck tailgate, which was impossible behind barricades. I mean, it was amazing, right? But it's stuff where like that is totally out of my element and I love it. I'm grateful for it. So yeah, I do I do a lot of uh, classes if I can. Awesome. Yeah, it's always good to kind of, you know, hone those skills and, and learn new skills. So definitely an awesome thing to keep to always keep training. Now yes, do you uh, a weird also... Oh, sorry. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um now do you also teach classes? 
So I used to teach a lot of the concealed carry permit classes. I did that in Florida and I did that in Tennessee and I'm glad for it. But a lot of states that went constitutional carry kind of lost that requirement, the need for the classes. So totally understand. There's still value to handgun permits for anyone listening, depends on your state. But if you don't know, there are some states you can't open carry, you can't constitutional carry, right? And so having that permit that reciprocates with other states is really valuable. And so I think people lose sight of that. Um, but I do some private classes maybe twice a year now. Um, I've done some for like a girl in a gun groups and stuff like that, where they want a class on actually moving and shooting, actually reloading, using their holster, like what have you, where the concealed carry classes don't teach you that. They don't teach you how to use your gun. They don't know how to move and shoot or reload or you know, some women come come to me and I'm like, I need to learn how to draw it on my purse. And they find out they can't do it. They don't know how. That's the wrong gun. You know, the gun malfunctions, what have you. Um, and then every year, I think you saw that. I know we missed out this year, but next year is because you're amazing. Got to have you uh, come fo uh, photo everything is the gals date the range. So I do an annual 100 women event in Knoxville, Tennessee. Pistols, rifles, shotguns. We blow up Tannerite. We shoot ballistic dummy lab targets. We we have a good time. So I you know, this year we had the machine guns and the 50 cal out, which was a huge hit. <laughs> so yes, I do teach when I can. <laughs> awesome. And you mentioned, of course, Gals Day at the range. Um, what got you started hosting that? I was like, frustrated by the lack of kind of like female community or like community where it wasn't male led, which I'm, I love the guys that I've learned from, right? I love the guys that I've trained from. So I'm not saying anything against them. It's just a different, I feel like feeling when you're not around the man that maybe like you've married or you're interested in there's this unknown pressure that you kind of put on yourself and i've seen that with every every woman that's been married is like she loves her husband but she just wants to perform in front of her husband but she doesn't know how she's never done it right so separating that out was kind of like what i saw as a value um and then having moms and daughters come out i had that happen i've had three generations of women come out so that very first year was more of just kind of like, hey, let's get women together. Let's separate us from the guys. Let's see what we can do and learn and accomplish together. And after that, it was so rewarding. And it was just such a good, safe space for women that I just kept doing it. Now I can never stop. I've done it for five years. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it definitely seemed like a great event. You know, I, I wish I could have come out, of course, but uh, next year for sure. <laughs> next year. I'd love to have you. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you know, when you look at um, things like competitions and just training in general, um, especially when it comes to women who maybe have never shot a gun or um, who are afraid to get a gun or shoot a gun or carry one for, you know, everyday carry, what would you um, say to those women or anybody really when they're a little bit on the fence about um, carrying or getting a gun? Yeah, I mean, you need the most basic level of education and go from there. Like, it's definitely not a good idea if you're uncomfortable or you don't know how to even clean your gun or disassemble your gun. You shouldn't go buy a gun and just immediately load it up with hollow points and stick it in a holster, right? Like, that's even I don't do that. I, okay, so starting at the very beginning, anybody, a female, male, what have you, um, find a either reputable, and that's very important, I'll explain what it means, reputable instructor to learn from or a good gun group. Again, a girl and a gun, well armed women. I know there's a lot of those chapters out there. Um, GOA has has amusing like range entire state oh gosh United States and they've got a conference coming up and they've got panels look at those panelists so where I'm going with this is like reputable means someone that actually shoots they don't always have to compete right but they they need to be someone that's on the firearm or on the range often shooting their firearms maybe they are a competitor um, maybe they do defensive classes and they've been teaching for a while essentially I'm not looking for the the average Joe person that shoots 10 rounds a year with an NRA certificate to instruct. Like that's not valuable. That's not a good instructor. Um, so vetting the instructors are really important. And looking into the competition world, um, those competitive shooters are going to be very valuable. You know, if you look up some of those guys, they are going to know people where they live or in their area that do teach. Not all of them do. Um, and then just, I, I honestly believe this, I would just avoid some of the gun shops and some of the stores because they're not there to help you. They're there to sell you whatever firearm they have on the rack that they haven't been able to sell. They're trying to sell the used gun, right? Like they're not, and a lot of them are not knowledgeable on firearms, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I think just looking into the community, whether it's on social media or YouTube, or you will know someone, right? Just find that person. Like you've DM me on Instagram. We've never met. Now we're doing a video, right? Like how, <laughs> how can, <laughs> more people should do that and reach out to those people and, and start with me. If you're listening, hey, like I can help you. And if I don't, I, you know, know someone, I know, know someone that knows someone that knows someone. So we're, we're a, a small and a big community that are here to help. I will say that. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, it definitely. I mean, the the firearm community in general, um, women's groups, all of that. There's such a um, closeness, even though people are, you know, all over the country, and it seems like you know everybody's there to help everybody. So definitely a, a warm community feeling for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, how has your like networking changed over the years? You know, from when you started out with competing and. You know, how has um, competing and, and training and all of that helped you kind of grow? Yeah. So, I mean, what a lot of people don't know is the the good brands, the right brands, um, the companies out there that support shooting competitions actually shoot the firearms that they sell, the ammo that they sell. They actually compete on a larger circuit. And so when I started out, I had no idea. Like the one of my marketing clients I've had forever, Hunter's HG Gold, I met him on a shooting range. We ended up taking an RO course together and we just started getting connected that way. Um, back in the day, like I've, I've never worked with them, but like Staccato, um, Tony used to travel to all these matches and set up and that's how we kept in touch. And the guys from Federal Ammunition, like they actually came out and competed. And to be honest, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's um, like a, a just ancestral thing in the firearms industry where if one company has an employee there the next day they're at another gun company they literally shift around but they never like leave so all of these things that i went to on the competing side was really valuable but also like showing up to the nra annual meeting which is you know annual free to the nra members it was a great place to go and and network um obviously i started getting into shot show with everything that i have credential wise and that's a different ball game if someone's wanting to get in and they start writing or publishing on youtube or what have you then typically or start a marketing firm you know you can get in that way um but every single opportunity that i can i, I go to like the goals conference is literally in knoxville and coming up here this weekend and i'll be i'll be at that event um and it's stuff that i i spend my own money and time going like i don't get paid to go to these things i'm i'm there showing up showing people that i care about our, our gun rights i care about the competitions i care about sponsors too like a lot of people don't know how much money some of these brands pour into matches and they don't get a big ROI. And we should be supporting these companies more because they give back. And so those are the people I really want to go thank and shake hands with. And I, I love supporting those folks. So, yeah, I think just for me, it was showing up, investing in myself with time and money, going to these things. And it's paid off when I don't go to look at it like, what can I get out of it out of me or what can I get out of it for me? Right. I, it's not a selfish thing. It's it's something where I don't expect that at all. I actually want to see what I can give to others and help them out. You know, I'm in the women's fashion show this weekend at GOA. Not something I love to do, but I will help them out. <laughs> so um, that kind of stuff is really important to me. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's it's a really good. Um, again, it comes down to community and, and meeting those people and really having that strong community. So awesome. Yeah. Um, now, outside of like firearms and shooting competition, things like that, do you have any other um, hobbies or anything that you enjoy doing in your off time? Yeah, so I actually turn a lot of my um, gun and shooting trips into like hiking and backpacking trips. Every year I'd go out to um, Idaho for an event and I end up going to the Smoky Mountain, or the Yellowstone Park and um, Oh my gosh, why did I just mind blink? Tetons. Wow, Tetons, most beautiful place ever. And then of course I have the Smoky Mountains in my backyard. So I love hiking. I love going up to Lacan and stuff. And and even when I went down to um Alabama, I think it was CMP for a major match. I went to the Pinhody Trail and did that. It's a pretty flat trail. But I've been hiking in my whole life. I, I love being outside and I love the quietness of it. Um, and then the other hobby, which is like, I feel like on a nerd level, but I read a lot of books. Like actually this weekend, I I did take time. I shouldn't have, but I was so tired. I read two books. In two days <laughs> was like okay and i'm done <laughs> so those are rare moments that i get to do that i'll read on airplanes and listen to podcasts i feel like those are good hobbies but anything around stimulating the mind and not just sitting there kind of doing nothing is important yeah absolutely that's awesome well um i mean that was really all i had today was there anything else that you wanted to share um or that you know you wanted to talk about um you know i just say i i would love that everyone has these rights to own guns in constitutional carry states. I love that a lot of people can go buy a firearm, you know, long guns specifically for sure, you know, because they can get it and leave the next day or the same day. Some of these, you know, handgun checks might take days if you don't have a permit or what have you. But where I'm going with this is I don't want more legislator. I just want more people to take responsibility of firearm ownership and realize that that tool is a very, very, very powerful tool. Um, I don't really use the word weapon a lot, even though anything could be a weapon, right? But that firearm you need training with and it's not a once a year or one time only right it is something and the, the classes the handgun permit classes that they do not count guys so when you buy a gun realize 
hey, I need to probably put 500 rounds through this in the first you know, couple months or what have you. I probably should do ongoing education. I probably should treat this like practice driving a car, um, you know, whatever your like perfection is, you know, we all take classes or certificates or ongoing education. Why are we not doing that with our firearms, right? So that's where I really want to leave people with is take ownership and responsibility of that and actually go get training and do it often. And if you even see me like at a higher level of competing, I still take classes. I still am that student. If you stop being a student, you really stop growing and learning. And I think that's a very scary thing. So um, I recommend taking classes, getting out there, practicing with your guns and getting more proficient at them. Clean them yourself, maintain them yourself. You know, malfunctions are good. Clearing them is a good lesson. So that's what I want to say. <laughs> awesome. I really appreciate it. And I think those are great lessons and, and great tips for everybody. Um, thank you so much again, Kenzie, for doing this with me. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'm Good. super excited to, you know, get more involved and, um, you know, hopefully we can meet up at some point. I would love that. Absolutely. We have to. <laughs> thank you for your awesome. time. Thanks for having me too. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks again. You too. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.